Good morning, everyone. You've chosen a very exciting day to join us because we're here with Erica Rossico, the co-founder and CEO of Slice, the app that allows you to take a photo of a product you like and instantly find out how to buy it. So thanks so much for joining us, Erica. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, guys. Can we start out with you just telling us about Slice? Sure, yeah. Uh, Slice is a visual search platform that uh, basically integrates into a retailer application and a lot allows for uh, uh, consumers to take a picture of anything and receive a, a purchasable result for that for that image. And you can purchase it right in that instant, right? Yes, right away, yeah. Um, right through the retailer's uh, site. Yeah. Awesome, but so. dangerous. <laughs> Very so, dangerous, I know. We've got a, a team of people working here, and every time I like, we, we do a lot of ingestion, and um, every time I walk by their computer screens, I'm like, oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, in addition, though, to trying to accomplish this huge feat, you're also the president of BIG, as you were just telling us, the yes. Business Instincts Group. So, yeah. what are some of the first things you suggest your startups and your portfolio do? Um, so we use a, a process at uh, Business Instincts Group uh, called the Ripkit process. Uh, it's a, a process that we've uh, created in-house. Um, and, and what it does is it really allows for uh, a team of people all coming uh, coming together from different walks and, and different places um, to get alignment and um, and really understand what, what it is we're building, um, knowing full well that at the very beginning <laughs> things change and um, you pivot and, and, and that's fine. Um, but this is just kind of a starting ground uh, to, uh, to, to, to basically just jumpstart the company. Um, so we spend a lot of time doing that, figuring out what uh, we really, you know, we talk about our why, our what, how we're doing it. Uh, you know, use the Simon Sinek uh, um, uh, methodology there. And then um, we also really uh, do our, um, our measurements. So our, our 90 day, our, um, our, our one year and our, what are our 10 year goals or however long we want to we wanna be involved in this company. What is the big goal of that company? Um, and then we review it weekly. So that's kind of the, that's the, that's the, the beginning, beginnings of any project for us. How about for Slice in particular, though, Erica? Because working with mobile, it's completely uncharted territory, and no one's done what you're doing right now. So, how do yeah. you set those milestones? Um, I think you know it comes with a lot of we we're just, we ask a lot of questions. Um, so we don't necessarily know the answers, but but we think of the right questions to be asking. Um, and and for us, it was really you know how do we solve a problem that. Um, that the consumer has, and how do we use, you know, what, what, because there's so, there's so many um, technologies out there in, in machine learning and computer vision, and it's all really great, but, but none of them fully solve that problem, solve the problem of being able to take a picture of something and receive a, um, uh, a purchasable result back for that in its entirety. So we kind of took a step back and said, what is it going to take to actually build that? Um, not necessarily from an academic approach and 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 more of a, a holistic approach um, using of course scientists because they're they're <laughs> they're very important but also understanding that uh, you need um, you need to look at it from from a more holistic view as well and the amount of data that you're using for this is mind-blowing can you kind of walk our users what through the process of doing that is yeah, so uh, so we basically do a kind of like an ingestion um, type process where we take um, the database of um, of the the retailer um, and we do a lot of attribution. We we uh, we um, we have defined we have our own system of how we actually uh, classify items. Um, let me tell you, I've never there's so many like things about fashion that I would have never <laughs> never thought of. <laughs> Like, like just like words, and it's it's amazing. But we we classify it all, um, and then we we take it through and we process uh, the images, uh, and then we um, we're able to then um, uh, identify those images as they come through in the in a raw form. Um, but we use a, we're using a bit of a mixture of of, of, of human computing as well as um, as the machine um, machine learning component. So, what was the most difficult stage for developing this then? Oh gosh, uh, the most difficult stage for developing this. I would assume all. 
Yeah, it you know it's ongoing. Um, the every retailer uh, we're finding is a little bit different. Um, they're they've all got uh, you know different levels of. Uh, some of them are really great, and they've got you know everything's all set up, and they've got their data, and you know it's all it's very easy to find and easy to search. Um, but others others are less so. So uh, we've had to kind of. Uh, manage through that but uh, but all in all we, we, we just have to find the right solution for um, that works for all all retailers all right so now I want you to put on your operations <laughs> hat for a second oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> what did you pri prioritize in the beginning I mean what systems did you put in place first and then modify later um, what systems did we put in place first I think um, Gosh, what system? I think the the, the biggest uh, the biggest system for us was probably hiring and recruiting. Um, I think that the your your team is probably the most um, most important um, aspect. Um, and and in a lot of cases, as much as um, you know, we've got some we've got some very smart people working with us. But it's it's we're hiring for attitude. So uh, it's definitely the right kind of person and and the, the kind of that builds the heart and soul of your your organization. So I would say that that's probably a lot of what we focused on first was building that solid team. Um, and then from there, it was you know uh, a, a lot of the um, you know the, the weekly reporting, the the meeting structures, those kinds of things uh, that that came into place. Uh, but it's an always a moving target there's a um yeah there's nothing that stays constant that's for sure <laughs> are there any major compromises that you had to make though knowing that you'd adjust them later uh major compromises that had to make it knowing that we would adjust them later um i think there's a lot so one of the things that i think uh we've had to do is we've, we've just really had to say this is this is our our platform and let's get out in the market let's go um, and and really on a on a daily basis I think we're adjusting um, mm -hmm. and we you know um, our um, our our platform right now that has a lot a lot more manual components than we'd like but we know that we want to um, make efficiencies as we go but in order to do those things and in order to understand how um, how we can make those efficiencies we need to actually be operating the platform so uh, we just had to get in and and kind of hope for the best <laughs> and uh, and now we're, we're continually uh, improving uh, that that system and that um, and that uh, product for the end user and I know you guys are doing that with six of the biggest retailers and yeah. I was wondering how do you go about forging those partnerships we are very fortunate to have a uh, uh, our president is um, a um, an amazing uh, uh, he's very connected, and he's had uh, he's had a very a very past a very great past uh, past um, career. Um, so a lot of that has come from him. But also, I think um, you know we we we're not afraid to tell our story and just get out there and um, and um, you know build into build into the bigger picture. Um, so I think that we you know we've done a lot of um, ensuring that you know, we've done a lot of press, ensuring that we're you know always in the in the in the eye of the media. Um, and just and just really talking about what it is we're doing, and I think that that's what makes. I think a lot of companies are probably they're scared to talk about it, but um, um, we just we just talk about it, and and it it, it continually grows. Um, but yeah, I would say we've got a really great BD team. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of press, what do startups need to do to get that press? Because you're a marketing and PR pro. Um, what do they need to do? Uh, like I say, uh, tell your story um, and. I think really, actually, I think really understanding what your story is is probably the 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 biggest piece. Once you know that, and once you can you can tell it and 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 understand that, I think that people people do want like I mean, there's people out there doing amazing things. Like people want to hear about it. Um, it's just telling that story in the way that uh, that. Uh, you know, people can understand and, and, you know, not getting too technical and, and really um, telling it on that level that, that, that people can relate to. Okay. And so now once a startup does get press, often you see that they'll just maybe retweet it or share it a few times. What do you think the best way is for them, though, to actually utilize that press and get the most out of it? Um, oh, we do a lot of things with our press. Uh, 
we, um, I, we, you know, we, 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 we disseminate it to our shareholder base. Uh, we, um, we use it, uh, in, um, in, on our website. We, um, you know, we, the, the featured in that, that always helps, um, <laughs> uh, lots of different things to be able to do. Um, but you know, it is, it is, uh, it does seem to come and go pretty fast. So, um, you, it's kind of, you've got that window and you, and you do what you can with it and then, um, um, and then, yeah, but I guess it's just, yeah, continual talking about it, being part of it, I think is, is big. One of the things you touched on, Erica, is making sure that as a founder, you know your story. Yes. So can you give us an example of your one minute slice pitch? Gosh, my example of the one minute slice pitch? Um, I, yeah, great. Way to put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, you know when we when we're talking about slice, uh, we're we're really talking about uh, we talk about visual search in general, um, and we generally um, we we talk about the fact that slice are everything in in um, in search is visual. Uh, searching through words, uh, I don't know if you guys when you search for things on Google, you end up uh, finding some some pretty interesting things and things that. <laughs> Definitely not relevant at all times, um, but but for us it's all about relevancy. Um, so Slice is is visual search at its its root, and we're not an app. We we power the platform uh, to to provide uh, visual search. Um, but uh, as far as a, as a pitch goes, I'm I'm not as refined. I'm not generally in the public. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the backgrounder. <laughs> It's all good. Everyone plays a big role. So one of the ways you guys have really gotten the company to accelerate your growth is by going public. And it was really early for a company to go public. Can you explain the key factors that led to that decision? Um, I think for us, uh, being um, being in the Canadian market, things are uh, a little bit uh, different. Uh, in order to continue to grow the company, we felt that the best decision would be to to go public um, and, and be able to continually grow on that. Um, but uh, but the, the decision was it was definitely well thought out and we um, we think it was it was definitely the right decision for the company and and we're you know we're gaining uh, momentum through that for sure. Great. What what are some of the biggest changes that occurred after that? Biggest oh way more structure. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, a lot of a lot more reporting, a lot more. Uh, so that's when I think the real the real. Uh, things started to kind of turn into uh, a lot of systems, a lot of the infrastructure that you need to put in place in order to operate uh, as a public company is is it's, it's crazy. Um, but it really forces you to uh, to to do those things because you don't you don't have a choice now. Um, so all the things that you kind of talk about putting in place, you end up having in place very fast. <laughs> yeah, and another <laughs> one of those huge changes was your acquisition of Pounce, which mm -hmm. uh, added to your technology. What were some of your biggest takeaways from that? I mean, how did you transition them into your culture and expectations? I guess. Yeah. So we, were, I mean, Pounce is a very, uh, very small team, um, but uh, we, 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 we've, we've taken Pounce. We've kind of looked at it at. Two, we kind of do two different types of acquisitions in in our um, our view. We acquire companies based on um, you know the the product that may may work alongside of. Um, of Pounce, or we may fully integrate them. So uh, Pounce has kind of uh, been able to, will continue to operate on its um, on its own and use the Slice um, uh, technology, uh, but it will it will have that uh, its own core team. Um, of course, members from the team um, come with a breadth of uh, experience and knowledge that uh, we that we find very valuable to the team, uh, including Abitel. So uh, we're we're really looking forward to uh, continuing to work with him, and he he will play a big role in um, Slice as well. So, all right. And so now, what needs to happen for you in the next twelve months for uh, for me to use Slice in any store <laughs> worldwide? <laughs> um, I think so. I think the big thing is we're we're scaling out a our um, our team. Actually, we decided to move uh, into uh, Cape Breton, which is uh, in uh, Nova Scotia. And uh, we, uh, our big thing is, you know, building that team and ensuring that we can continue to build efficiencies with the human computing platform, um, as well as efficiencies through uh, machine uh, machine vision. Um, one of our, our our big pieces right now is is going to be scalability. Uh, how do we get um, how do we operate with 
every major retailer and allow for um, for you know consumers to find um, to find what they're looking for. Um, but that is probably our next our next big is just taking this thing really operational <laughs> in a big way. So uh, we're gearing up for that. So you'll be in charge of that, of course. Yes. yes. Yeah, I know. Oh gosh, scary. <laughs> can we end, Erica, with you telling users how they can start using Splice? Yeah, sure. Uh, so currently, uh, Slice is in its beta form. Um, we are um, we are going to be uh, probably uh, getting another. Um, we'll probably have another app active in the next little while. Uh, but you can't. I don't think it's actually. It's not anywhere in the market right now. But I've it is tried. Coming in, <laughs> yeah. No, it's coming in, um, in 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 short order. It will be there. <laughs> and how can so can they follow you on social media or can they sign up for a waitlist on your site? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Follow me. Uh, also, uh, I would just you know keep your um, keep your uh, follow. Slice it um, and and just keep your eye on the news. It'll I, I think it'll it'll be it'll be short order. For sure. It'll be hard to miss on the news. In the- <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Erica. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Thanks, guys.